Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Masters of the Universe Origins Teela and Evelyn figures from Mattel. Now here in front of me you can see that I have both Teela and Evelyn on their cards. And the reason I'm reviewing these two figures together is back when they originally released these figures back in the 80s. Uh, the two figures essentially used the same moulds and it looks like Mattel has done exactly the same with these modern figures. Uh, they've basically taken the same figure, different paint schemes and a different head, but underneath they are the same figure. So I thought it would be a good thing to review them together and we can then compare them as well to the original uh, vintage figures just to see how well they stand up. First thing though, let's take a look at the cards. So first up we have uh, Teela on her card. This is a US card. If you want to see the sort of big differences between the cards then check out my reviews of Skeletor and He-Man. I cover all the differences between the US and the UK and uh, Euro versions of the cards of which there are many. I'm not going to do that again in this video just because uh, it gets a bit repetitive but uh, check out those videos if you want to see the differences between those cards. So on the front it's a very standard card now this uh, sort of look with the Masters of the Universe logo at the top and the red explosion behind her. Uh, behind each figure obviously is the comic uh, we've reviewed that before as well because uh, all six of this first wave of figures have exactly the same comic. If we turn it over the back is slightly different for each because there's a nice little uh, bit of artwork at the top you can see Teela in action attacking Merman uh, and then it also shows you a little bit of sort of different artwork here showing uh, how to put the weapons in the hands and also the sort of the posing ability of each figure otherwise the rest of the cards is pretty much the same. I'll bring in Evelyn's card as well so you can see exactly what I mean. Front pretty much the same it just has her name on it uh, on the front and then if we turn it over the back has a different picture where you can see her in action. don't think she's attacking anyone there she's just uh, doing a little bit of magic and then again it's uh, basically the same images here but just with the different weapons and showing her being posed. Really though what you want to see is what these figures are like out of the packaging so uh, let's take them off the cards and we'll see what they look like. Okay, so here we have the two figures. Now both of them do come packed with the comic that I've uh, reviewed before. Evelyn's comic uh, was actually packed like this, so it's all sort of rucked up and bent. I think that's just uh, bad packaging on Mattel's part. I do think there's a lot of quality control problems with these figures and that this is just an example of uh, that sort of thing. So uh, luckily it's the same comic with everyone, so I've got multiple copies of it, but uh, yeah that's a, a little bit sort of uh, rubbish, but you know I get sort of getting used to that now with the way these things are packaged and I have to say I've just been sort of messing about with them trying to do some posing things and I've already managed to damage one of the figures because it's made out of such cheap plastic but I'll show you that in a minute um, it's a bit frustrating and I'm a bit annoyed that it's already happened but as I say I do have issues with the uh, sort of modern toys and the way they're made and the sort of the, the quality of plastics that are used and this is just a fine example of it but before we get into that let's take a look at the figure so Evelyn I think is a pretty good figure it's the uh, same sort of posability as uh, all of the other figures. So you've got elbow joints, wrist joints, um, uh, knee joints and sort of good pelvis joints so you can move things around and then you've got uh, ankles and you can also rotate just above uh, the boot there. And I th actually think this is a pretty nice figure. It does really look like Evelyn and if I bring in my sort of vintage original one you can see I think the, uh, the likeness of the two figures is pretty good. Uh, they've obviously updated the sculpt on the face to make it sort of finer details and that but really the overall appearance of the two is very nice. They look uh, like vintage figures. They have the added ability now that you can properly pose them although uh, like the original figures you know the, the female ones always had a little bit of a trouble standing up. These do as well they're a little bit awkward to uh, sort of get pose and get them to stand. I guess that's just because their feet are quite small and the figures themselves are a bit top heavy so uh, it's much like the original figures that uh, they were always like that and as I mentioned sort of earlier on in this video the basic uh, bodies of these two figures are exactly the same they're just painted differently and that's how it was uh, with the original figures as well. So Evelyn comes with her all on a stick and again that is much like the uh, vintage one in fact uh, just a little bit sort of fatter I would say the it's detailing is still much the same so it's yeah I think that's quite a good sort of representation of that. Uh, we'll take a look at Teela and I'll show you the problem I had uh, with this uh, figure. So Teela has 
uh, slightly more weapons. She has her sort of snake stick thing. She's got a shield here, which again, sort of fits in her hand. It's a little bit awkward to uh, get her to hold it. It doesn't want to stay in her hand. And I can see that being a problem for some people. She also has this sort of uh, headpiece that uh, wraps around the back. Let's, we'll take that off so you can see the figure properly and see the detail of the head. And I think the head sculpt is pretty nice. The bodies, as I say, are exactly the same. It's just a different paint scheme. I'll show you that in closer detail so you can see exactly what I mean. They have the same sculpts. There's no sort of changes to them, just uh, different plastic used and different paint used. But with Tila, this is where the problem uh, came. I started posing the figure and sort of moved the arm in like this and rotated it up. And you can see it split the plastic. It's actually cut in. The body uh, plastic is harder than the arm plastic. And you can see with a little bit of sort of pushing uh, that it, I've actually managed to split the arm. And I think if you rotated this figure a few more times, you could pretty much cut the top of this arm off. And as soon as I'd done that, I thought, well, I'll, I'll test it on uh, Evil Inn as well, just to see if it does the same. And it does. You can just about see that this is harder on the yellow plastic. But uh, just by rotating the arm, I've managed to do quite a nasty sort of gouge in there. So uh, at some point, if I was to do this a few more times, that arm would snap off. It's uh, really cut quite nasty into the plastic. And that's what I mean. Modern figures are made out of materials that really aren't built to last. And I think the designers sort of go a bit crazy with how they design them and don't think of things like that. I'm going to try again on the back here. Let me just show you. If I rub this arm up the back, which is all I did, you can see it actually sort of dents it and marks it. And it, on the front, it did it in such a way that it has cut the plastic. So um, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed about that. And a little bit annoyed that uh, the first thing I managed to do with taking this figure out of the packet is, is damage one of the arms. And um, yeah, that's really quite frustrating. But that's what happens with uh, some of these modern toys. Uh, I don't think they're made as well as they could be. Having said that, though, I think the paint schemes on these ones are pretty nice uh, compared to the uh, Manny faces that I reviewed. I think the paint application is very good. There's very little sort of mistakes on them. So a little bit of a sort of bleed on the arm there, but no uh, sort of bad application. The Manny faces I had had some terrible paint applications. So this one certainly looks a lot better. Uh, let's compare uh, Tila to the uh, vintage version. I'll put her little headpiece back on so you can see how they look together. And yeah, you can see it's it's a pretty close match. The faces, as I say, have been sort of updated. The details are a bit finer on the paint schemes, but overall the rest of the figure looks quite nice. The flesh tone on this one certainly is better than He-Man's flesh tone. He-Man's flesh tone is a very strange colour. I think this one is a little bit more realistic, so um, I think it just looks a bit nicer. You can see my vintage Tila here has got quite a sort of dark tan colour to her, whereas this modern one is I could say just a little bit more sort of flesh colour. So I think that uh, works quite nicely. And overall, it's a very good representation of uh, this sort of vintage style of figure. When it comes to accessories, I think uh, Evelyn feels a little bit sort of underwhelming. Tila has her staff, she's got a shield and she's also got her sort of headpiece. Whereas Evelyn just comes with her orb on a stick. This was exactly the same as it was uh, back when uh, they were released in the 80s. And I, I did a video a while back making a cape for Evelyn because in the cartoon she has a black cape. Uh, and I, I just I happen to have a spare one of the capes that I made uh, sort of a few months back. I thought I'd uh, see if it fitted onto this. So this is my cape that I made for a vintage figure. And you can see it does actually clip onto the modern figures. And I think that makes Evelyn look a whole lot better. And it would have been quite nice if Mattel had gone to the effort of maybe uh, making a cape for this figure. So uh, not only would she have come with this little uh, staff, she would have had a cape as well. And I think that would have made the uh, figure just feel like you were getting a little bit more in the box. And maybe it's something they can do in the future is uh, release something like this. As you can see, it fits really quite nicely. I'll put a link to the uh, uh, my sort of cake making video in the description. So if you want to make one for your own uh, figure, you can. Uh, but you can see it does make quite a difference to how she looks. As I've said with the other figures, I actually think they're not too bad. They have some issues. Certainly uh, the plastic used on Tila is a bit disappointing, but the overall effect of them is pretty nice. I have a feeling though a lot of these will break as time goes by. Uh, the way they have been constructed, you can remove sort of all of the body parts to swap them around. So you can take arms and uh, sort of the legs off and the bodies apart. Uh, so I think over time these will uh, turn up in sort of collection bins and at car boot sales with lots of pieces missing. 
using as kids uh, will sort of undoubtedly pull arms and legs off. Uh, and I think with Tila, you may see quite a few with uh, damages around the armpits and uh, just because of the type of plastic that's used, it's so easy to do that. I mean, I literally took this out of the packet, twisted the arm and it cut straight into it. I could see it cutting in, so I stopped straight away. So I think that could be a big sort of future issue with them. Overall, I think the uh, vintage original figures are better. They stand up to being played with a lot more and these are aimed at kids. I know they're sort of collector's pieces, but they are sold in toy shops and aimed at kids. And so they should be built a lot better. And I think uh, certainly with Tila, I think there's going to be a few issues. So that is my review of Tila and Evelyn. I have to say a massive thank you to uh, Mark Alexander, who very kindly uh, helped me get these figures. If you've enjoyed this review, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.